Thank you, and good evening. My name is Kola. Uh, I'm a linguist. And I know the first question you would want to ask me now is, how many languages do you speak? It's an interesting question, and it, it always seems to call, you know, uh, you know every, every time you say you're a linguist, you seem to call for that kind of question. Of course, it's a terrible question. Uh, I would say so because it's like asking a mechanic, um, how many cars do you have? <laughs> right? Um, yeah, he's a mechanic. He works with cars, but he's... The work is not in owning and driving a car. So now, that doesn't mean that linguists shouldn't learn many languages. Many of us do. I speak a couple of languages myself. Again, that's not the point. Um, Omoya and I talked um, yesterday about Nigerians and the attitude to languages. I was wondering a couple of days ago about why the people who speak more than one or two languages in Nigeria, let's move English now, are those who have moved from one place to another to live. And that kind of multilingualism happens only among those who have moved, not those who are hosting them. You know? And I've wondered why. You know, is it motivation, is it educational syllabus, and a number of other things. That's not what I'm talking about today. Um, I'm going to show you a little video, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my work and how I think um, we should look at multilingualism in Nigeria and how we can use technology to change things. How we can use technology to preserve our own languages and how we can bring a change into how um, we transmit these languages to the next generation. Um, the video is going to be up now. Video. correctly for Europe and America. My dad will watch this and be mortified because here it's actually Oye Lowo is how you say it. But if I were to say that, don't try. <laughs> don't even go there. I don't know what's going to happen. No, I really don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I had a, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oprah was on. She taught the nation how to do it. Let's stick with Oye Lowo. <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, so Oyelowo oh, yellow, oh, is what I'm saying. Oprah yes. was on uh, last week. And she told me how to say it because he said Oyelowo, oh, yeah. but it really is Oyelowo, oh, which is so hypocritical of my dad because he gets everyone's name wrong. <laughs> everyone's <laughs> what, do, what, do, what do you mean? Well, uh, so I did a, a film with uh, Tom Cruise. It's ask what was this movie you did with Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> so this guy has been a movie star for 30 years. <laughs> So, so, and then I did uh, Lincoln with uh, uh, Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Hey, I heard you were doing a movie with Steven Spielberg. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Here's your dad. Here's a picture of your dad meeting Oprah for the first time. Ah, he's lovable. So he's cute. This is how this is how bad it is. That even today, um, he he knows Oprah. He's met Oprah. Opera Winifrey. <laughs> okay. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I did for a little while, and then I realized that uh, it was quite insulting. I'll tell you why. Um, it was funny and cute, and David Oyelowo wanting to sell his movie, Selma, had to make the host feel comfortable with the idea that a Nigerian name is difficult to pronounce. And that is a common theme you would probably find in many um, American, mostly, uh, media, um, about how African names, for some reason, are just that exotic and hard to pronounce. Now, many of you probably you know, um, bought into that stereotype that, for some reason, you know, because you're European, it's hard to pronounce. You've seen Europeans trying to pronounce African names and ma making a mess of it. And it's wrong. Now, I, I did my master's um, studying whether that's actually true. I spent uh, uh, two years um, doing a research about does race have anything to do with the capability of human beings to learn another language? And the result, of course, after studying a number of subjects, is that it doesn't. It's not your race that determines whether you can speak or pronounce some other person's name. It's your attitude to it and your exposure to information, relevant information. So, while watching the video, I said the reason why Jimmy Fallon um, couldn't pronounce Oyelowo and said Oyelowo uh, was, of course, because it's funny, and it could make his audience laugh, but also because there's no space online 
where you can find that kind of information about African languages. So, um, Africans for years have been able to pronounce Schwarzenegger or Eisenhower or Dostoevsky, etc. And we do this quite easily because we have avenues and we also try. Europeans don't do it because they don't try and also because there's no avenue for it. So that um, was how the idea of a Yoruba name dictionary came to play. So um, Yoruba name dictionary, the idea was to find a place online where you could go and find the meaning, the pronunciation, um, the spelling and the tone marking of Yoruba names. It was going to start with Yoruba. Um, in over a year, we also got volunteers to start the Igbo version as well. The idea is to have a place like that online where we can document all our African uh, experiences. And we thought of this because over time, as many of us know, we don't speak our languages anymore to our children. We move and live around other people. We don't even learn their own languages and we don't learn ours. Um, we result into what I call pathetic bilingualism in which we don't speak our languages well but we don't also speak English well, as many of you would know when you interact with people. Um, so in the end, we're losing on both fronts. And the reason why we don't do that, of course, our parents are not sending language to us, and we also are spending time um, looking for uh, places where we can find these things. I know that when you write in Microsoft Word, you put an African name, you see the red line under it. And the reason why is that is because the people who make those softwares, first, they don't have information relevant to help them know that this name is real, um, and also because we haven't done much work in that direction as well. And so that's what we did, all, all, um, all of that. So a place to learn about languages um, and pronunciation, etc. Why are these things important? They're important because our languages are who we are. Nigeria has about 521 languages. Um, as of the last check, about 12 of them are supposed to be endangered or uh, threatened in some way. The reason why we don't know exactly how many are threatened is because when we do census, we don't ask questions about how many languages do people speak. Perhaps because of ethnic suspicions and a number of other things. We don't ask uh, religion, which is fine, I don't care. But we don't also don't ask how many languages people speak. I understand that for political reasons, many people don't want to um, say how many ethnic groups you know, exist. People are afraid that somebody will inflate, etc. But I'm interested in knowing how many languages exist. So you ask somebody, how, what's your first language and what's your second language? And what other language do you speak? Those things would help us to find out exactly how many languages are viable in the country. But my work in yorubanim.com uh, is also to create avenues to make sure these languages survive over time. And so that when adults who actually have all this information and who are probably helping us now to document them are no longer here, we'll have enough places to find them. The thing about language endangerment is that it's not always about what languages we pass on to their children, which is relevant, as I've mentioned earlier, but also what languages are we using for, uh, in technology? Because as we realize, um, technology is a way to the future, is a, you know, it's going to take all of us from here into the next generation. And if we don't bring our languages as well into this technology, you're going to find ourselves left behind. Big companies like Google and Facebook, etc., are investing in artificial intelligence, but they're doing so only for big languages. And why is that? Because we haven't shown that we care enough about our languages, enough for them to be viable for these purposes. So, what do we do? Next, what's next to, to be done? Um, I think all of us have a responsibility first to speak our languages, also to learn the languages of our neighbors, uh, and to find a way to not just learn English. I mean, English is going to be there. English is always everywhere you go, everywhere you look, on TV, etc. you always find English. But your own language is what you have. It's your own heritage. Um, what I'm doing as in my own role is to find every other way I can uh, to contribute to the uh, documentation of these languages with the tools technology gives us. I want to talk a little about the, um, the campaign we had with Twitter, um, which was in 2014. Um, when Twitter was translating the platform, they were allowing the platform to be translated in many languages. They, um, I think they had added um, one 
uh, European language at the time. And then we thought that, why, why can't we have an African language? And we suggested Yoruba. People laughed. And then we created a day to pressure them and do everything we can to make sure they can. Um, we want Yoruba to be trans to our Twitter to be translated into Yoruba as well. And we spent two years complaining and tweeting at them and doing all of that. And eventually, um, that came through. So, um, in summary, um, please run through the review I have here so I can move forward. Um, okay. Um, I want to talk about, um, yeah, we were traveling yesterday and the airline ran through its, uh, its safety procedures in Nigerian language as well as in English. I thought that was a very great, um, great idea about how we want to present ourselves, how we want the language to survive. We have to find ways of making sure our languages work, not just English. We were talking about this earlier today as well. If you have safety procedures in a language that you're not sure everybody understands, then you're not really giving you know, safety instructions to people. So if we have all our major languages being able to function in different um, domains, then you'll find that you are able to transmit these languages again from one generation to the other. Please scroll through it a little bit. Let me go to the conclusion. Okay. Um, all right, this last one is about technology. Um, I've talked about artificial intelligence and how Siri and all of these things are in English and in French. With the Yoruba name project, we're trying to create something of uh, a text-to-speech functionality, which is an ability to make the machine pronounce an African language. That hasn't been done before, but we realize that if we can do that, have a machine, you can type in a text and it pronounces the language back to you for Yoruba, for Igbo, for Hausa, and for other languages. Imagine how much more we can connect each other, connect with each other. Imagine how many grown people who live in villages are going to be able to use technology, and imagine how that technology is going to be able to serve them uh, much better. So, in summary, um, complexity is a good thing, and it's a resource that we have in Nigeria. Um, but importantly, we need to be able to make sure that complexity work for us, and we have the tools of technology to make that happen. Uh, it's up to us to make sure we do it as much as we can and not shy away from that responsibility. Thank you.